Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be rebuilding the power supply board on the Marantz 2250B. So the power supply board, or P800 according to the schematic, is a very important board on all Marantz receivers. It provides a 35 volt feed and a 14 volt feed for multiple boards on this receiver so they have a DC voltage to operate under. On the 2250B, it also houses the speaker protection relay, which protects your speakers from unwanted DC current as a result of amplifier failure. So since this is such a critical board, it's definitely a very good one to rebuild or restore if you're looking to work on your Marantz receiver and make it last a little bit longer. In this video, I will show you all the components I use, how I selected them, and we'll get them put into the receiver and turn it on and test it out to make sure it works right. So, as you can see, I've got all of my new components laid out on the bench here. I'll start up here with this uh, Omron MY2 relay. This is an exact replacement for the relay that's already in the receiver. Next to that we have our Nichicon PW series capacitors. These capacitors are excellent for this job because the PW series is for power supplies. Below that we have our semiconductors. We have some common cathode diodes, some transistors, and some diodes over here too. I won't bore you with the specifics of uh, the semiconductors, but I will include some part numbers in the description. So next I'll talk about how I'm going to go about doing this. When I restore a board, I remove each component one at a time and then I replace it right after I remove it. That way I don't lose track of what I'm replacing, I don't forget the orientation of a component. And also, the best thing about P800 on this Marantz and many other Marantz receivers is that, uh, well, look how little I have to do to work on this board. I have to do nothing. So, without further ado, let's get started replacing these components. Boy, this is one of the worst ones I've ever seen. This thing is so bad that uh, the other leg didn't even come out. And funny enough, this one's right by the uh, Zener diode that was broken. I wonder if this capacitor has something to do with uh, that failure. Hmm. Again, good thing we're in here, good thing we're replacing this stuff, because uh, you don't want to be running a receiver with uh, something like this, that's for dang sure. Yeah, so I kind of ate my own words when I said that uh, you can get to all this stuff so easily because, well, this piece of metal right here is keeping me from getting to the solder joints on some of these components. So I'm going to have to uh, take the board off and kind of finagle it in a way where I can get to those uh, components that are still left. Also, this is a great time to clean up the uh, old glue that uh, Marantz used from the factory around some of these larger capacitors. To do that, I'm going to use acetone, the same acetone I used to uh, restore the magnet pans. Check out that video if you're interested in that. And uh, after I remove that glue, I will move the board over slightly by removing the screws around it. And uh, that should help me out there. You know what? That's plenty. My fingers are tired. I don't need to do any more of that. But that's how you remove that stuff if you want to go all the way. But anyways, let's try to get that board to a place where we can uh, move it. So it looks like I can just shift it just enough to where underneath I'll be able to get my hacko underneath the joints and uh, hopefully be able to replace the rest of these components. That took so dang long that my GoPro battery died, but here it is. We've got all the components, we've got our original relay, we've got the old capacitors, got the old semiconductors, it's looking pretty good. So at this point I think I'm ready to uh, get this thing on the dim bulb tester and see if I uh, made any mistakes. Okay, I've got it on the dim bulb, so I'll flip the switch here, we'll see if it lights up. 
Yes. The relay clicked in. I don't see any smoke yet. Hopefully I don't ever see smoke. Not bad, not bad. Now the only way to know if I actually did this right is to uh, test it with some sound. So I've got this thing set to FM here. See that we can uh, we can get stations that tunes to stereo. So just so I can potentially monetize later. Hey, okay. look at that! It's working. We have sound. However, we're not done yet. There's still a very important thing we need to do before we can send this thing off on its merry way, and that is check the power supply voltage. See, there's a little trimmer pot. There it is. You can see it's this little plastic guy right in there. That is what controls the 35 volt output that uh, the service manual wants to adjust for. So. I'm going to take this off of the dim bulb tester, hook it up to real power, and then we'll adjust it with the uh, voltmeter. Okay, so I've got my voltmeter hooked up to a uh, ground back here. I'm going to take the red probe and I'm going to look for pin J804 on the power supply board. And when I find it, I see that we have 35.24 volts DC. That is high. We want 35 volts, but it's not too high. So we're not in too much trouble. Fortunately, I guess we've got on J804, and now I'm going to turn the trimmer pot the wrong way first. Yep. I guess we'll turn it down until we get to exactly 35 volts, or as close to it as we can. I'm going to call that good. We did not need very much adjustment because, uh, well, I don't know why we didn't need very much adjustment, but we didn't need very much adjustment. 35.02 is just fine with me. So in conclusion, I'll just take a moment to kind of go through everything that just happened here. So this here is the speaker protection relay. This is what makes the click sound when the receiver turns on. In fact, you might be able to see it by just having me turn it on right now. There, you probably saw that move right there. And that's because these contacts right here, they come together to allow the, uh, the sound to go through this relay and then if there happens to be DC, there's a circuit in here that will release those contacts and keep sound from getting to the speakers. You may have noticed that uh, by replacing the uh, transistors around this relay, these are the transistors that drive the, uh, the protection circuit, the relay clicks in faster. And that's kind of cool because, you know, you want to get to listen to your music as soon as possible, right? Next over here we have our... Uh, common cathode diodes. Semiconductors have come a long way since the 1970s and there's much better parts out there that can be had for very little money. This is a good example of that. I replaced these guys. In fact, I replaced every single semiconductor on this board because I can overspec it, I can overbuild this and make it even better than it was when it was new and I know that all these capacitors are a lot better than the originals and they'll last longer. So that goes for these common cathode diodes these transistors that help out with the relay and then all these other transistors around here too that also have their own uh, purposes and of course in any restoration it's proper to replace the capacitors so we replaced every single electrolytic capacitor on the board with a Nichicon PW series capacitor oh, I can make that a little straighter there you know fit and finish is uh, nice and uh, this one right here was especially good. We replaced it because uh, I'll just bring this back out. Yeah, this thing used to be on this uh, circuit board. Uh, you definitely don't uh, want that. I don't. I honestly don't know how this thing worked with this thing in the board. But uh, I mean, you saw the power test video. It was working just fine, and uh, this was in there. So good thing that's been replaced and then like I said we replaced the uh, zener diodes and the normal diode also we put new thermal compound down around uh, H804 right here this uh, TO220 transistor parts list in the description so 
that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. Next video, I will be redoing the power amplifier boards. That should be a really exciting video, and I hope you enjoy that one if you enjoyed this one. So, yeah, this stuff's kind of boring, but I'll make uh, more exciting videos in the future, I promise. I trade beers for some receivers later. I'll tell you the whole story. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.